If you had invited me five years ago to stand on this stage in front of you, I wouldn't have been relevant talking about today's topic of my speech, authenticity, because I wasn't living my life authentically. I was living my life as a man, as the left picture, seemingly very successful, and indeed he was by every normative aspect, dual university degrees in engineering and business administration, first six years of his career as management consultant with McKinsey & Company, then a successful line management career to executive levels, and at the age of 50, CEO of a fast-growing and successful and large insurance company. The whole family package, every normative way of succeeding in his life. But he wasn't happy because he wasn't living his life authentically. I now do that. The second picture is recent. It's the same CEO of the same insurance company, and I'm a very happy person living my life authentically. And it all culminated three and a half years ago in September 2018. On a Thursday, I went home from work, the last day in my life as a man, much, much like the first picture you see here. When I came home from work, I took off my suit and gathered all the rest of my male clothing, put them in plastic sacks to be given away for charity. I wouldn't be needing them anymore in my life. The same evening I went on to my social media platforms, changed my name from Carl to Caroline. A few of us will change their names once in a while on social media. But then I also went to change the gender marker. Not very often you do that in life. The next morning, Friday morning, I went to office in a skirt suit, high heels, as Caroline, as a female CEO. We had a short gathering with my employees. They had had short advance notice. And then I went on business as usual. Has this been successful? Because it was quite a big thing. I think I'm the first CEO, at least in Europe, to do this. Yes, very successful in every possible way. But what is the essence of the story? What is the true core? And that is the concept of identity. Identity can be defined as all those personal traits that makes a human being unique. It is closely related to self-esteem and how we view one another as human beings. And it is my lifelong pursuit to understand who I am, to understand my identity. That is the topic of my life journey and this short speech. And that journey can be divided into three steps. Each of these steps has had huge risks, huge consequences, not only for myself, but also for my family, my friends, my co-workers, my entire environment, and has indeed required strength. And, also, and the consequences have been potentially huge. At times, I felt that I was putting my life at risk. The first step is to understand my own identity. To finally, after 50 years, gather the strength to confront myself, to answer the fundamental question, who am I? Second step, to live my life as who I am, to take the consequences of the insight of my identity, go through a gender transition and live my life authentically. And the third step, to gather the strength to dare to be vulnerable and talk about this most private and most daring part of my journey publicly, to inspire others to be themselves and to help others be allies. 
Let me take you through these three steps in a bit more detail. First, knowing yourself. Identity is not those superficial qualities you might think of firsthand. For example, the characteristics of yourself, you know, qualifications, how you look like, strengths and weaknesses. And it is not about that image you might have of yourself. I certainly had that uh, when I was uh, in your stage. That is, uh, my mind was that I should be or was a successful person and I almost married my persona. No identity, what's in your inner core. I grew up as a boy and uh, later as a man. And there were quite a number of norms that uh, was associated to grow up as a boy. I was supposed to behave like other boys, uh, look like them, do stuff that they did. And I, know of, I knew of nothing else. I didn't dare to do anything else because I was fear of, of being excluded. And then as a man, it was taught to me that I should have a good degree, I should have a good job, then I should marry a woman, have a family and have a successful career, to have a title, to be someone. It was kind of expected in the male role. But early in life, I felt that there was something inside my head that made me feel I didn't really fit in. I really didn't feel exactly as the others. But I wasn't strong enough. I uh, didn't have the knowledge. This was the, before the age of internet. The only source of knowledge was the encyclopedia on the parents' bookshelf. And there certainly there were no role models around. I knew of no one that I managed to change this gender thing. So I thought that, well, maybe this was my fate in life. So I just bit down hard and said to myself, I will make this male thing a successful journey. I will try to do it. It would take me 50 years to find the strength and courage to finally confront myself, to investigate this feminine thing I had in my head, to dare experiment with it and finally see how, how that is closer resembling to my happiness because I wasn't a happy person and I became a happy person when I dared to be like a woman in terms of expression. So that insight came five years ago to me, a mesmerizing, thrilling insight. I am a woman in my identity. Huge insight, but at the same time, a calmness fell upon me because everything made sense. Everything fell into place. That leads me into the second step, what to do with this insight, living as I am. So what to do? Should I make a diary entry? Hello diary, interesting fact, I'm a woman in my identity and then go on with my life. And most certainly that would have been more co convenient from a practical point of view, not only for myself, but for my family and others around me. Much more convenient. But at the same time, would I, would I manage to live my life not in accordance with, with the knowledge of who I am? It, in fact, it dawned on me quite quickly that I just needed to do this. I just need to be authentic, to be happy. It's a big decision. I felt like I, I couldn't know beforehand how people would react. How would my family react? Would I be left alone? Because my biggest fear in life, what had held me back up until this day, 50 years of age, was the fear of rejection. Fear of being bullied, fear of being excluded, fear of being left alone, fear of being ridiculed. Would I be left alone? Would I be alone from my family relationships? Would I be excluded from my colleagues? No one had done this at the senior business level before. What would happen? It would be a huge experiment. But I just felt I just need to do it. So I took the plunge and embarked on this adventure. It turned out to be the ordeal of my life. I've been through quite some difficult times before in my life, but the year leading up to my transition 
turned out to be the most difficult time of my life. That journey a, a transgender person goes through in the transition process is so mentally consuming that there are, unfortunately, quite a few who don't make it to the end. And those are, sadly enough, people who are no longer with us. And in the darkest of moments, I had to remind myself that my kids, I have three kids, deserve to grow up with two parents as opposed to one. Therefore, I just need to make it to the end, regardless what shape I end up in. And I did it make through to the end. It culminated that day three and a half years ago. And everyone has been supportive. I have still have my loving family, which I live in. I have all my friendships. I have my colleagues, still the CEO of Week Insurance in this picture. It's been a huge success, finally living authentically. And I'm a very happy person. What to do then? Should I just stop here? No, that leads me to my third step. Tell the story. Why would I do that? This is so private, so struggling, my story. Why would I tell other people about it? Well, I reminded myself, when I grew up, there were absolutely no one else that I knew of who had done this, such a story. I thought that because I, no one had done it, it would not be possible, and therefore I just have to live my life according to the norm, as opposed to as according to who I am. Then I saw the, the importance of sharing stories or living who you are. I try to live according to the motto, who dares wins. So I never want to do anything half-heartedly. So I gathered some additional strength and decided I want to share my story as difficult as it is. Because I hope that at least one or two or three, hopefully even more people, can be inspired to live their life according to as they are. Because I know that representation matters. Being transgender is uncommon, but it is not unnatural. It is just another way of living your life authentically. So what would I like to share with you tonight? I want you all to live your life exactly as who you are. Resist the temptation to mimic normative behaviors now or later in life just in order to fit in. Find role models that are brave enough to show their true personalities and follow them and be inspired by them. Be as authentic as you possibly can in everything you do. Stay true to who you are and allow others to stay true to who they are. See the value of differences among people. Embrace them because we're all human beings and we're all equally worth. Thank you.